Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is a podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah. I am very happy to be with you after technical issues <laughs> to bring you this episode um, uh, with another returning author. I hope you're having a great week. Mine, as I mentioned before, is busy. We have new people here visiting. So last week's visitors from California left on Sunday. This week's visitor from California arrived on Monday. And we are very much enjoying taking her around and spending time with her and doing all those lovely touristy visitor things. But it makes it makes for a busy time. And this past weekend was uh, our friend's birthday, and so we celebrated not only with dinner and drinks on Saturday night, but Sunday was a picnic on the beach, and uh, it was the most perfect, beautiful day. It was warm, but there was a breeze, so it wasn't hot, and so you could just lie on the beach, and we had, you know, shade and food and drinks and blankets, and it looked like we had moved in for a month uh, with all the stuff we took down to the beach, but it was so nice. Um, but, yeah, you know... After a while, my extrovertedness just, uh, whew, my, my, no, my, my, my extrovert, my extrovertedness, which isn't prevalent in my personality, wants to hide, and my introvertedness wants to jump out and say, nope, that's it. We're gonna go live in a pillow fort, and we're gonna hide from the world, <laughs> and we're done with being social. Um, it's, it's it's good, but you can if if you're an introvert, you will understand. If you're an extrovert like my husband, you will be like, "What's the problem? It sounds great." Um, at any rate, that's a little bit of an update on what has been going on with us. And then I've been having some strange technical issues with various things, which is always a challenge. But I have a returning author. I'm excited. Oh, speaking of technical issues, so at the end of last episode, I said that I would be speaking with Kirsty Lore, who is not a returning author. Uh, it would be the first time I was speaking with her. And then she had inter- she had power problems on her street the day of our interview, so she needed to reschedule. So we rescheduled, and then she found out that her son had a doctor's appointment, and so we needed to reschedule on the, the, time, the exact time that we rescheduled, so she needed to reschedule. And so we rescheduled for the next day. And then <laughs> my husband had a doctor's appointment get scheduled the exact time that we were scheduled to do our interview. So now hopefully we will we will find time next week. But um, I was just laughing when Kirsty and I finally get to speak. So you can see how my week is going, right? At any rate, the other interview I had over the weekend, I had two, was with author D.A. Mucci. He is... This episode, as you can see by the title, returning to the podcast. If you would like to hear his first interview, because this is a series, we are speaking today about his, the second book in his Iggy series, his Ignatius series, and this one is called The Sword of Dina, Ignatius and the, and the Battle of Dinus Aphron. The first one was called Ignatius and the Swords of Nostow. If you'd like to hear that interview, that is episode... 3.30 if you didn't hear it and you would like to start there or if you'd like a refresher or anything. Uh, episode 3.30. As I said, second book in this series. It is called Ignatius and the Battle of Dinus Aphron. Let's go ahead and I'll give you that description. The sweat pours from his brow as Iggy forges a sword from a meteorite. Will it be the weapon to save them? As the evil and obsessed Emperor Malak plans to kill Iggy for his crystal amulet, Iggy is, attra- is distracted by Raresa. His crush makes it hard to focus, but he's becoming a master smith. With that comes the muscles that will make him a great fighter, too. There's just one problem. A dark wizard, 
a death knight, and 5,000 soldiers have been tasked with hunting him down. Where will he hide? The mysteries of the Nostal warrior still haunt Iggy. There must be a reason he was given the swords, and he prays it will help him return to his place and time, but Pennsylvania seems far off. Is, his, is the answer on the island of Cambria? So that will all sound very familiar to you if you read um, the first book with the, the Swords of Nostow. If that does not sound familiar to you, definitely pay attention to the first part of the interview um, when uh, David recaps that first book and some of the series, and then we start talking about the second book. I am really enjoying this series so far. I like the characters. I like that David's sense of humor comes through in the writing. The um, secondary characters are very well thought out. They all move the story forward. They have some of their own stories that are becoming more prominent within the main story and helping that story to move forward. And like I said, the sense of humor is great. I am enjoying this. I'm glad that there are more books to come. As always, I don't want to wait for them, but I will try to be patient and wait for these books to continue coming out. At any rate, let's go ahead and let David talk more about the series, especially the second book, which again is called Ignatius and the Battle of Dinas Afrin. And the author is D.A. Mucci. Hi, David. Welcome back to the podcast. And thank you very much for having me. I've been looking forward to this. I'm very excited to have you back. I'm excited to talk about the second Iggy book. But before Mm -hmm. we get to the books, um, for people who maybe didn't hear the first interview or would like a refreshment, about a refresher as to who you are, could you share a little bit about yourself? Sure. I am... uh actually 69 years old now, uh, and I am a semi-retired emergency room physician. I have been in the emergency room for over 40 years, full-time in trauma centers. And uh, when COVID hit, we had to back off a bit. And my wife said to me, why don't you go write that book that you've been talking about for years? And hence, I started writing uh, the fantasy Ignatius series. And the first book was Ignatius and the Swords of Nastau. And uh, if people always ask me, where did you get the name Nastau? And Nastau spelled backwards is Watson. And Watson was our uh, little tiny Shih Tzu puppy who thought he was a really bad character, even though he was just meek and mild. And so after he crossed over the Rainbow Bridge, I turned the words around and turned him into a, a Nastau uh medieval creature uh, and turned him into the bad warrior he thought he was. So that's where I got the name. And the first book story is about a young man, Ignatius, who goes by Iggy. He's 14 years old. And really, he looks like he's about 12 years old. And he's very insecure. He's uh, born and raised in modern times in Pennsylvania. Um, Being a 12-year-old, just starting um, high school, he's bullied, picked on. He has no confidence. And basically, he finds himself through, you know, a quirk of fate transported back to the medieval times on the kingdom of Sky. And the story is about him coming of age and growing and taking someone who has no skills whatsoever, can't defend himself in modern times. And now he's back in medieval times where there are, um, you know, dark magic wizards chasing after him because he's different, sword fighting where people actually get killed. This guy cowers with threats, let alone having to protect himself with a sword fight. And um, it, it's about him trying to get himself back to to home, to Pennsylvania. And the story is a series that's going to follow him through his 18th year. And it, it's, uh, as I said, based in the Kingdom of Sky, which is based on the Isle of Sky in Scotland. So I've woven in a lot of folklore, myths, and and uh, and stories from the actual Isle of Sky, because when you go there, and actually my wife and I did go there for 10 days to, to, to search it out and research it, it's a fascinating place. So I built a lot of real things in, from the Isle of Sky into the Kingdom of Sky. 
And, I and that's like, basically the premise of the story. Yeah, yeah. No, and I feel like in the first book, Iggy was really, obviously, he was trying to adjust to being suddenly transported to this different world. Um, but also a lot of physical training on his part for, through various adventures that he goes on. And now in the second book, he's still training, but he's training more in rune magic. And it's, it's a little more intellectual training. Would you say that's accurate? Yeah, that, that is. Um, Iggy now enters a second phase of his life. Um, he gains confidence. He learns how to deal with bullies. Um, and he learns that it's just not fighting back physically. There's a lot of, uh, mental, uh, fighting back that, that he has learned to do. And he, as I said, he gains confidence and, uh, he grows. He grows in, in of himself internally and also physically. And he goes on new adventures uh, on trying to find his way home. And he tries to find out why he is there in the kingdom of sky and how he got there and learn about it. He finds out things about his past that there might be a little bit of a connection um, between him and the medieval times in the kingdom of sky. That's kind of like a little teaser for your audience. I'm not going to give too much of that away. But right. he learns a lot and he grows a lot and he then um, goes on more adventures and it's a, a fun, fun story. It is a fun story. We're going to continue talking about this story, of course, but first we are going to take our first break for this episode. When we come back, David will be talking about his inspiration for the second installation of this series. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and I will be right back. Golden State Media Concepts bring you the Bible Study Podcast. Reflect and journey the Bible as together we study God's Word and be inspired. Bible study made fun and informative for all ages. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Bible Study Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with author D.A. Mucci. We are talking about his Ignatius series. We covered Ignatius and the Swords of Nostow in the in the part before the break, and now we are moving on to talk about Ignatius and the Battle of Dinus Afrin. Let's get back to the interview. It's always tricky with books like this that are part of a series because you want to talk about them and you want people to be interested, but you can't give too much away from the first book, right. and, <laughs> but you want to still talk about the second. So in terms of this story, did you have any particular inspiration that got you started on this part of the story? Well, one of the things I try to do is I try to look at the characters and not just guide them i have the the characters guide me so as i'm writing i'm uh, i'm thinking to myself you know if this was a real person in his growth or her growth what would actually happen what would they do what would they think and how would they um move forward in life so that's basically the how how i dealt with iggy and the other characters and people that were more on the sides he ends up bonding with and learning from and they get pulled into the story and you learn a lot more about them but for Iggy it's basically in real life what would this guy do how would he grow and how can I write that to make it believable and and that's the approach that I do in writing the characters is try to get inside each character and let them actually guide me to the writing in terms of other characters, we've got a great cast of secondary characters, some of which now are on what some people might see as side quests. Um, can you talk a little bit about now, not only writing Iggy's story, but now you're writing the stories of um, Rorasa and the Q and a few other people that are they're, they're intertwined. Is that uh, a fun challenge? Yeah, it is. I take guidance from my wife in certain aspects of with Rorasa. What would Rorasa do? How would she 
handle these situations. How would I, one of the things I tried to do in the story is I, <clears throat> I didn't just want Iggy to be the main character, even though the story is about Iggy. I wanted to bring in a diverse of characters um, and bring in their strengths and their weaknesses and thus the sides, many of the side stories become at times the main driving force for Iggy. And that's, that happens in real life. You have friends that, 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 um, move you and guide you and, uh, you learn from them. So Madam Trinity, Madam Trinity is this dingbat, crazy 60 ish year old woman in book one. In book two, she becomes very prominent and you realize that she is a very wise, smart, powerful runes master. Um, um, and, and Iggy can learn a lot from her. And then I've started to bring in Metter, who is this dwarf who had a very little aspect in book one. But in book two, he really, his character takes shape and Iggy bonds with him. And the three of them become almost compadres um, in book two and, you know, almost in book three also. So I, I, and I've, and I pulled in Raresa. Um, I have a nice side story about her because the book just isn't because about a male character. I, I wanted it also to be about a female character, Raresa growing also. Um, she's, she's this, this, sword wheeling young teenager who no one pays attention to um in really in book one in book two she becomes prominent and she starts looking after other women and she she um one of the things that um, my my wife helped me guide that is you want a strong female character you want many strong female characters for diversity so i took Raresa and as Iggy grows, Raresa grows, and her talents grow, and she then blossoms. It's like, well, what can I do to help women in need? And that's a side story that's going to become more prominent as as book three, book four, and book five go along. And you know, I'll I'll I'll, I'll be tying all of that in to to, to Iggy's adventure. I love it. Thank you so much. You you mentioned Metter, who's a dwarf and um, mm -hmm. hilarious in his own right. <laughs> he is. Where... And in book three, I just finished writing book three. He is just, you know, a hoot in book three, you he know, is. and, um, you know, the people that have 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 read book three <clears throat> so far are like, this guy is hysterical. And he's very and you realize how powerful and strong he is. You know, it's all, and and I really enjoy writing him. Can you talk about his socks? Where did that idea come from? Ah, the socks. Well, you got to wait until book three to find out the importance oh, of the socks. <laughs> oh, no, I can't tell you that's so, that's so important. It's not something that's just thrown in. All uh, all I will tell you and your audience is it comes down to the great sock war and that's all i'm gonna say uh -oh. <laughs> the year, i don't the like year you long, anymore, sir. the year-long <laughs> sock war between the dwarfs and that's okay. that's the teaser <laughs> okay so if you don't read book three for anything else read it for the great sock war <laughs> i love it my, my wife read that and she looks at me she says I i'm concerned about you <laughs> I like your wife. I think I said that last time too. <laughs> she yeah. sounds very fun. She is 30 years of marriage and we're still having a blast in life together. That's awesome. You mentioned Watson, your little dog. And before we started recording, you said that you just got a new puppy. Do you think this puppy will inspire a character? Well, each one has. Um, we lost, the reason we have a new puppy is because um, uh, a while back we lost our second puppy, Coco, which was a Bichon. So Watson became a Nastau and Coco in reverse is going to be an Ok Ok. <laughs> so I took K-O-K-O -K -O and I reversed it. So this one's name, um, the new puppy's name is Maya. Um, so after 16 years, 
um, Coco passed over the Rainbow Bridge. And we waited a little while and we realized, you know, we love animals in our life. So we just a month ago picked up this three three month old bundle of joy, four pound cross between a Maltese and a Shih Tzu. And we named her Maya. And probably somewhere in book four, book five, Maya will become a medieval creature <laughs> and be brought in. I haven't quite thought that far ahead because I'm still working on the on uh, on book four, the Ockops, um, <laughs> who were just introduced in the last scene of uh, book three. I love it. And I think I just heard her a little bit. Yeah, you know, I call a squeaker. You know, the <laughs> bark yeah. is like a little squeak. So that's my nickname is little squeaker. Absolutely. <laughs> Now, last time I had um, a, a full copy of the book uh, to read an, an e-copy. This time I just had a, an ARC PDF. So I didn't um, have, the, in the last book, there were QR codes and different things that were interactive. Is it the same with yes. this book? Yes. Every book is going to have uh, QR codes. Um, and as you're reading, uh, readers have, um, you know, they, mostly been very positive with the QR codes. I've had a couple of people say, well, you know, I, I've got to stop and take my phone out and look at it. But a lot of a lot of other readers say, I really like that because I can put it up on the phone and I can see the picture and it brings me more into the scene. So yeah, every book is going to have, uh, you know, at least three or four QR codes with different creatures, lands and castles and things to, so that as as they're reading it, they can at least see what was in my mind. Yeah, I love that because y you have an image in your head maybe of something that you've described, but then when you get to see what you were thinking of when you were describing, it's really fun. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Time to take our second break for this episode. When we come back, David will be talking about some of the real places that have inspired some of the places that exist in the books. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and my interview with author D.A. Mucci. Let's go ahead and return to that interview. Uh, you mentioned the Isle of Skye. And actually, um, we are friends on Facebook, so I saw some of those posts that looked amazing. Uh, oh, it was. That's part of the inspiration for this world that you're, you've created. Um, are, we've gone to different lands now um, a couple of different times. Have there been other inspirations for some of those other lands? Sure. Well, um, there's a total of five lands now by the time you get to book three. <clears throat> um, the Kingdom of Sky is based after, um, as I said, the Isle of Sky. There is Matt Reach, which is based on our sheer delusions in my mind. <laughs> and same with um, the, uh, well, Dinus Aphron, the in old myth the dinosaur there was a dinosaur Aphron, and i read about that and, and that's how uh, you know i came up with the name and started to to fashion dinosaur Aphron. but once i got into it <clears throat> i basically started making up things um cambria um right now in 
book one, two, and three is just a mythical place, but book four, you're going to really get into um, the land of Cambria. Um, and I don't want to give too much away um, because I, I just don't want to. <laughs> and um, I'm devising what Cambria is. Um, it hasn't really formulated in my mind. The other place, Scathatch, um, is from Africa. And so there is a uh, land in Africa where the Dohemi warriors um, are from. And that is a real place. Um, and it's on the, you know, how Africa has that, that hump on the left and it curves around and then goes down right at that curve. Uh, back uh, two, three hundred years ago were the real Dohemi warriors um, where the the Amazon uh, female fighters actually were were fashioned out of. And so I've done a lot of research on that land and um, you know in in book three and book four, you're gonna there's, you're gonna be following Scat Hatch in Africa, you know when she goes back to her Dahemi tribe um, for certain reasons. And you're gonna have to read the book as to why. Um, and so I, I I basically fashioned that land after a real land, uh, you know, in, in Africa. So there are some places that are fashioned out of real lands, and I would say Matt Reach, Cambria, and Dinus Afferon are just kind of made up in my in my mind out of you know uh, as it comes along it just I just write it you know there's no rhyme or reason I just decide where should they be what's the climate what is the landscape what should it look like and I just kind of and, and will that lead into what I need for 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 that land to be about for the characters to to move through and that's what I use to, to try to set how I write the lands for. Mm -hmm. Which sounds really fun because you can take inspiration from just about anywhere. And that with yeah. fantasy books, you can work those threads in. But you have to be consistent. Mm -hmm. You know, each place, you know, the sun still has to rise. It has to set. There has to be a climate. Um, and, and that climate has to be real so it's consistent. You know, you just can't walk around the corner and all of a sudden be from a humid place into a dry, arid place. So there has there has to be breezes, clouds, uh, you know, so that otherwise the reader, you know, it, it's it's not believable to them. As you write it, you have to write it so that they feel, yeah, this actually could be a real place that I I as a character could be walking through. And I try to write it so that the readers get into the character and and actually feel that they're in the scene. They're part of it and not just omnipotent up above looking down and, and watching it. And to do that, the the places have to have a feeling, a smell, a sense, um, you know, a touch to them. And it has to be consistent all the way through. And that's the hardest part of of writing, uh, writing lands is to make that always consistent all the way through. Sure. Yeah, I can imagine. I know you can't tell us much, but what can you tell us, tell my listeners about book three? Mm. Besides well, the soft war. <laughs> yeah. The, I'll just say that Metter, Iggy, and Madam Trinity really bond together and go on a phenomenal adventure and journey together. Iggy bring starts to bring a little bit of modern technology um into the realm uh of of the kingdom of sky also lequeu becomes a very prominent figure and he goes on a pretty interesting adventure um because and because of iggy Lequeu has grown. You, you look at Iggy as a 14 year old and who looks 12 and it's like, well, the story is going to be about him growing. But Iggy has a lot of, uh, of, um, effect on a lot of the other characters and he ends up bringing certain aspects of these characters out. And one of them is with Lequeu. And so Lequeu takes off 
It goes on a phenomenal adventure because I- Iggy has brought that out of him. And, you know, it, it all turns back. And, and even LeCue realizes that. He's like, you know, I, I met this guy, you know, less than two years ago, and he's pulled me out of my 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 shell of what I thought was being pretty bold. And look at what I'm doing now. And it's pretty amazing. And um, I'm not going to, I'm only going to, I'm going to leave it at that because if I give more, it'll give the story away. Yes. Well, and it's interesting that LeCue, upon initially meeting Iggy, really, really was annoyed by him. And now to have Iggy pushing him to be bolder than he already thought he was is. Yeah. And it's like, who, who is the mentor now? Yeah. You know, it's really, it's really quite interesting. The, the give and take the back and forth and, um, you know, same thing with Metter and Madam Trinity, you know, they, they rise to these occasions and every, everyone that's read it has really, as, as in book one and book two, they've fallen in love with Madam Trinity. Book three, they're like, Oh, this meta character is is really really good he's coming into his own it's not that he's coming into his own he's feeling more comfortable to show who he is and Mm -hmm. uh in this big hard you know clan leader dwarf running around with his hammer he has a soft side and everything and uh it it comes out and uh the, the readers that have read you know the the because I read it and I I have a group of of a bubble group that reads it and gives me feedback and they're like wow you know we really like this guy better he 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 has really touched us and uh, they want to they they want that to continue so I try to do that with every character you know bring bring them in and really not just have stick figures but bring their personalities and who they really are into into the book. Mm-hmm. It is now time for the final break of this episode. When we come back, a timeline for when we might get new books in the Ignatius series. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I'll be right back. Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. Together we dive into the world of sci-fi and science fiction. From episodes of Star Trek, Star Wars, to The Walking Dead, Resident Evil, all the hot new science fiction movies from the back doors of Marvel or DC. The Golden State Media Concepts Sci-Fi Podcast. You'll never look at science fiction the same way again. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author D.A. Mucci. And what is your timeline for the series? Because I have theories on what's going to happen. And so I, I just need to know for myself how long I have to wait to find out if those theories are correct. <laughs> well, um, book one took me about five or six months to write. Book two, I wrote in four and a half months. I finished book three in five months, uh, and it's off to the editor right now. And we're hoping that uh, late spring, early summer, uh, at the latest, it will be released. And uh, basically, next week, I start book four. So um, I'm hoping to get them sooner out. So while book three is in the editing process, I'm starting to map out book four and i'm hoping that you know every six months i'll have you know at the earliest six to eight months i'll have the next the next book out and it's supposed to be a five book series so Mm -hmm. you know three then four then five you know so i'm hoping by next summer um the whole series will be done and then i start with the side stories i'm already i'm already planning out um uh the stories of how Matt Reach became came to be, how Dinah Saffron came to be, how the Nastows came to be, how um the Dohaney Warriors 
uh, with Scat Hatch came from Africa to um, to the Kingdom of Sky. So, you know, I I I hope that I'm still you know, uh, alive and writing, you know, before <laughs> and and get all these side stories, stories done. So well, I love it. Thank you. Um, And you know what I said earlier that I had a, an art copy and I, that was completely untrue. I don't know where my brain was. I listened to it on audiobook, <laughs> mm. uh, which reminded me that I wanted to ask you that the audiobooks are great. Um, oh, Tim Campbell does a phenomenal. I'm so, so blessed to have him as a narrator. Yes. The perfect voice for on. fantasy. Yeah, but he, he you know, <clears throat> it, it's so funny. You listen to him and he's a 35 year old, um, guy in, in San Francisco. And you look at his picture and it's like, this is a 35 year old white guy. And you, you listen to him and it's like, this is an, this is a, you know, a, a 80 year old guy with an Irish brogue. And so when, when we first, got him you know it it was a confluence of of amazing things so we we did a lot of interviews and and you know with narrators no one really hit it off really good and my daughter said you have to get tim campbell so you know he's really sought after so i contacted him he says well you know i'm a little bit backed up you know he said well tell me about the book and I said, well, it takes place on the Kingdom of Sky, which is um, tailored after the Isle of Sky. And he said, hmm, very interesting. My wife and I spent a month on the Isle of Sky so I could learn the dialect. I said, really? I said, yeah, it's about this guy that is from Susquehanna, Pennsylvania. He said, real interesting. Uh, my wife and I were married on the shores of the Susquehanna River in Pennsylvania. And the most interesting thing was, you know, I said, um, you know, I, I see that you did the narration for um, Scott Pratt, who is unfortunately has passed away. He said, you know, Scott. I said, yeah, my my brother's Scott was my brother's wife's brother. And Tim said he was the first narrating job I ever took. And he got me started um, as a narrator and um you know, my career took off because of that. And he said, I'll do it. It's like between book one and book two, he does 67 character voices. And, yeah, everyone, and they're all different. They're all different. Yeah. He is phenomenal. He's really good. And and I love the way he does Madam Trinity the best. You know, <laughs> yes. that, that is that is my favorite. Because without giving too much away, she is more layered than you might first think. So exactly. he, he has to do a good job with her. Oh, he, he, I drive down the road, you know, when I first, you know, got the audios back for review and I was just hooting and laughing. He does Madam Trinity. He, he, he picked up exactly how I envisioned her, you know, and he did that all on his own. I was like, what, what, what a talent he is. Yeah, I agree. Um, well, how about for you in any free time that you might have for reading for yourself? What have you been reading? You know, I've been doing a lot of audiobooks because my free time I've been writing. So when I drive, um, you know, I, I, I'm the, the rhythmatics from, uh, uh, Brendan, Brendan Sanderson. Um, I've the White Tower from Michael Weishart. I did, the Michael Weishart series, um, you know, I did Sandstorm, uh, Wildfire. I, I really enjoyed his series following. It, it starts out with the Street Rats of Aramore. So I kind of followed him through. Um, my goodness, uh, Ian Kofer, I've been listening to. I love the Artemis Fowl series, and now I'm into the, Fo the Fowl Twins. Um, Victor Kloss, the High Council um and, and that series i've been uh, you know i actually finished that series um so those are the ones that i've been listening to and i kind of enjoy because they're they're entertaining and they 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 make me re i i kind of listen to them as like yeah that's how i want to write you know as i listen to other authors you get a, a sense of that's my style and that's how i want to present things to the readers um 
and and so I I hope that that gives a little overview of, of the things that I like. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, audiobooks are great because you can fit them in when you you know you can't read and drive, but you can listen and drive. Right, and when I'm exercising, and uh, you know, and uh, you know, I have my my earbuds in, and I listen, uh, you know, as I'm exercising and everything. Yep, exactly. I know you have a website, so if you can share yeah. website and any place people can find you on the internet in terms sure. of social media. Yeah, uh, website is d a mucci that's m u c c i dot com, and I am on Facebook under d a mucci, Instagram. And of course, on Amazon, um, if you uh, if you type in Ignatius in the Swords of Nastau or Ignatius in the Battle of at Dinus Aferon or just D A Mucci, it will bring you to uh, to my books there. Perfect. Thank you so much. We have talked about a few different things uh, during our time together, but is there anything that we haven't covered that you wanted to make sure we highlighted? Only that, I hope the readers are having as much fun reading these as I am writing them. You know, I, I, after 40 plus years in the ER, I've, um, I'm semi retired and I am having a blast writing this. I find myself, you know, uh, eating, drinking, sleeping, you know, the Ignatius series. I, I dream about the characters and I've gotten some great feedback from, um, you know, places unknown, people I don't know, and they're really enjoying the series. And and that you know I was at a um, uh, Amelia Island book festival with Dave Baldacci, and he was sitting next to me, and we're signing copies. And you know, of course, he's got this whole line, and I just have a trickle. <laughs> so uh, I had this one. It, 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 for me, it was like this was great. You know, I never thought this would happen. I had this, you know, nineteen twenty year old young man come up, and he was all nervous, and he's like. D.A. Mucci, can, can you sign, you know, book one? I brought it in. I, I saw that you were here and I loved it. And, you know, so I, I signed it. And, you know, he's like, is this book two? I'm like, yes. He said, will you sign one for me too? And I was like, man, that just, that, that if no one else bought one or had me sign one, that made the, the whole day. And then we were at another festival and, um, we're at, and in Rhode Island, and this mother came and said, my son is coming right in. He saw that you were here. He bought your books online and he want, he wanted to bring them in to have you sign them for an author. <clears throat> you know, as I said, David Baldacci had this line of 150, 200 people long and, and Mayan is just a trickle, but that's where you start. And, and he even said to me, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll get there, you know? And so he, he was a really nice guy, but for an author to have the affirmation that a total stranger would get in their car and drive, you know, however long just to have you sign their book, you know, that's just so rewarding. And that makes all the, the lonely hours of writing worth it because writing is you're, you're off by yourself, you know, and, and it is a lonely arduous process and you know to see the fruits of your labor even with one or two people say i've come here to have you sign my book it's like wow that is great so that is the end of the interview yes it was very abrupt i will tell you uh i i mentioned the 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 technical difficulties right so David is telling this lovely story about the young man who came up to have his book signed, how rewarding that can be as an author, completely understandable, and my computer crashed. My laptop just crashed. Died right in the middle. Um, and this is funny because earlier we cut this part out, but earlier Maya, the new puppy, the four-month-old puppy, had made it escape. And uh, I should do bloopers sometimes because it's hilarious that... She got through baby gates, she escaped, and she was going to be part of the interview. <laughs> so there was that. And then my laptop just crashed out of nowhere. So David had to catch a flight. He was headed off to the airport and said, no worries, uh, because it would have taken forever for my laptop to boot back up just so he could conclu- wrap up the interview. And he said, no worries. Um, so normally, you know, of course, I would say thank you and all those things. And I will just say that now. Thank you, David, so much for joining me to talk about the Ignatius series, especially 
Battle of Dinus Afron. I always enjoy when David comes on the podcast. And as I said before, I am really enjoying this series. I like Iggy as a character. I like many of the secondary characters. I think I like all of the secondary characters, except for Malik. Of course, you're not supposed to like him. He's the bad guy. <laughs> but I really like the quirkiness of the secondary characters. Madam Trinity, um, Mer- the, the dwarf, whose name just escaped me, starts with an M, that with his socks. Love it. Uh, just so many good stories that I know are still coming. So excited for that third book to come out. If you're a fan of fantasy um, in world building and magic and creatures and all those good things that come in high fantasy stories, then definitely check out this series. The first two are out. And as David said, there are more coming, at least three, four, and five. He's trying to get them out. I think he said every six months or so, which is exciting because usually you have to wait at least a year. Um, But if you have a reader in your life or you are that reader who loves high fantasy and magic and swords and journeys, then definitely check out this series. And as we talked about, the audiobook is fantastic. So if you want to read it, you can read it. If you want to listen to it on audiobook, cool. Uh, If you do read it, you'll get those QR codes. Otherwise, you can just go to David's website and see... He has artwork of some of the characters, and there's a lot of fun and interactive things on the website, so check that out. As always, thank you so much for joining me. Like, follow, and subscribe on the podcast platform that you're listening to this podcast on, and also leaving a review is wonderful, not just because... It's gratifying, (laughs) which it is, but if it's good, but, uh, it helps get the podcast out to more listeners. So more people can hear about good books from authors that they might not have heard of before. Also, if you are not doing so already, follow the podcast on social media. You can find it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Hope you're having a great week. Hope you have good things planned. I hope you're not having technical issues. Um, but yeah, I hope your week is going well. Regardless, though, as always, no matter what's going on in your week and your life and your technical issues, I hope that you can always carve out lots of time to get yourself lost in a great book. Thank you so much. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.